Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. This week, we'll be talking about the fall equinox, but first, I want to talk about a little bit of space news that broke earlier this week. On Monday, an international team of scientists announced the detection of a molecule called phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Long story short, one possible explanation for this is the presence of bacteria in the clouds of Venus. And notice I said possible. There are other possible and possibly more probable explanations for this that don't involve biology. But at the very least, it's an exciting chance to maybe discover something new, whether that's life on another world or some unknown chemical process that's happening on that mysterious planet. If you want to know more about this exciting discovery, you can check out some of the links in the description. And if you'd like to see the planet that's causing all the fuss with your own eyes, it's visible right now in the morning sky, most easily. So if you're up before sunrise, Venus is up around 3 a.m. and visible easily in the east until just before sunrise. And then after sunrise, it's still visible to the naked eye and with binoculars. It just takes a little bit more effort to find it. So you can get out your trusty stargazing app during the day and see if you can spot it in the clear blue sky. I don't know about you, but fall is my favorite time of the year. You have the chill in the air, the change in the color of the leaves, the promise of hot apple cider and pumpkin pie. What's not to like? Well, it's not only things on the ground that I look forward to. The fall night sky also has some pretty amazing sights that we can see. We've covered several of those over the past few videos, and we've got more to come in the coming weeks. This week, though, I want to talk about this change in the seasons, the autumn equinox next week, what that really is all about, what it means for your stargazing experience, and also an astronomical alignment you might be able to see just down the street. So first off, what do we mean by equinox? Well, we talked in the episode on June 17th about the summer solstice and how that's the time when Earth's North Pole tilts towards the sun. On the winter solstice, the North Pole tilts away. It might seem like the North Pole flip-flops back and forth, but it doesn't. It's still pointed at the same spot in the sky, roughly at Polaris, the North Star. What does change is where the Earth is around the Sun. The Earth's orbit around the Sun changes what constellations are visible during the night. And the fact that Earth's axis is tilted gives us the seasons. But there's a point in between the solstices when Earth's axis isn't tilted toward or away from the Sun, it's in between. These are the equinoxes, one that starts the spring and one that ushers in the fall. The word equinox means equal night, which refers to the fact that the length of the day and night are roughly equal at this time of year for a lot of the planet. But where you are on Earth has a big effect on how you experience the September equinox. From the equator on the equinox, the sun will appear directly overhead at local noon. From the South Pole, the equinox is the first glimpse of the sun since March. In the Southern Hemisphere, this is the start of spring, and the days are getting longer and longer. But the days are shortening in the Northern Hemisphere. At the North Pole, the sun sets today and doesn't rise again until March. And in mid-Northern latitudes, from now until late March, the nights will be longer than the days. While that might put a damper on your barbecue plans, it can be a benefit for those interested in looking up at the night sky. Back in June, you might have had to wait until after 11 p.m. for a truly dark sky. These days, you can see one by 9 p.m. The time of the equinox might also provide you with a sky-watching opportunity that doesn't come around every day. At the summer solstice, the sun sets north of west. And on the winter solstice, it sets south of west. On the equinoxes, it will set directly west. This change in the setting place of the sun was well known to ancient peoples, and alignments of places like Newgrange in Ireland, Chichen Itza in Mexico, and Stonehenge in England show an understanding of this phenomenon and an attempt to mark the passage of time. Well, you might not have to travel that far to see another solar alignment. This one a bit more by chance. The city streets of Chicago and many other cities are aligned roughly to the cardinal points. 
and the time of the equinox gives us a chance to see the sun rise and set directly between the buildings. This phenomenon, unofficially called Chicago Henge, is a sight to behold. It's a photographer's dream, and also a chance to connect to your city and the sky at the same time. Here in Chicago, your best bet is to check the weather and pick the clearest sunset opportunity, or sunrise if you're up for it, in the days around Tuesday's equinox. And go take a look. As long as the sky is clear enough to see the sun near sunset or sunrise, you should get a remarkable view down an east-west street. If your city doesn't have an east-west alignment, there might be other dates to look for this phenomenon. Places like Manhattan are more closely aligned with solstices, and there it's called Manhattan Henge. In the description below, we've linked to a post about Chicago Henge on Adler's website. And to learn even more about the Equinox and Chicago Henge, don't miss Adler's Sky Observer's Hangout, coming up next Monday at 7 p.m. It's a live, interactive experience hosted by Adler's public observing team. Should be a very informative time, a lot of fun as well. So definitely check it out on Monday. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and look up with us every Wednesday. Also follow the Adler Planetarium on social media. Happy Equinox, and we'll see you next week.